And welcome back, everyone, to the Pokemon Team Creation Series. Today's comes to us from Super Placido. I might have butchered that. Sorry if I did. Uh, who asked the question? We haven't actually really done a lot of One Piece characters on the Pokemon Creation Series. So, what is the team for Charlotte? Uh, I believe it's Charlotte Katakuri. I'm just going to go Katakuri. I know Katakuri. I know that part. Who is a secondary antagonist in an arc on One Piece. Involving a character called Big Mom, who's one of, like, the big, powerful characters in One Piece. Um, I mean, look, I could go more in-depth, but I don't know how many of you out there actually know One Piece. But, assuming that you're clicking on this video and you know enough about this character to click on the video, or you just enjoy the content, okay, I'll give a, the basic history. One Piece. If you know One Piece, it's a world that seems to mostly be ocean. I'm actually not 100% sure on the geography uh, or the geology of the world of One Piece. Suffice to say, I know a lot of it is ocean, with a lot of islands scattered in there. Uh, pirate, pirating is common. And among the pirates, uh, there is a character called Big Mom, who is a member of the Yonko, who are, like, the four, basically, they're four pirate lords, and they're, like, the pinnacle pirate lords. They are the, you don't F with these characters. Sorry, there was five of them. Sorry, five of them. Because there was Shanks, or there is Shanks, there's Kaido. I actually don't know what ultimately happened to Kaido, if he's still around. I assume he's still around. He's just maybe incapacitated right now. Uh, Kaido, Blackbeard, Whitebeard, who's no longer alive, and Big Mom. Big Mom is the pirate with whom this pirate serves. And so, and he is basically her second in command. He is insanely strong and powerful. He has the ability of a devil fruit, which is basically a fruit that if you eat it, you gain superpowers. They also taste disgusting, apparently. But that's more or less what happens. And so, we begin our journey into his team. And this was interesting, because with any devil fruit user, immediately I'm going to try to find Mon that are going to fit his devil fruit, or their devil fruit. But beyond the devil fruit, I also got to try to fit, try to pick Mon that fit their style appearance motif personality so where did i start with, where did i go from here well one thing i wanted to start with and i actually ultimately chose this as the idea of his original partner mon was already something a little difficult you see he is capable of using he's a very skilled um spear slash trident uh, marksman or uh not marksman he's very skilled with a trident he wields a trident and he's actually, with his abilities, even makes him a very skilled marksman in that sense. And I have a Pokemon for the marksmanship. However, Pokemon is kind of odd at the moment. We have a shield Pokemon. We have several sword Pokemon, including a Pokemon that is a sword. We have an archer Pokemon with Decidueye. We even have it. We have a hammer Pokemon with Tinkaton. And we even have axes with Cleavor. But we, to this day, as far as I could find, do not have a spear or lance or, I mean, technically speaking, I could have gone a Excavalier for, like, a javelin or, like, a lance for, like, um, horsemanship like a knight has. But that doesn't really gel with this idea. No, I'm talking about, like, a spear or a trident or something like that. A long staff-like weapon that has a bladed tip at the end or multiple bladed tips or points or blades. So Excavalier doesn't really work in that sense. And yeah, we don't have that. We have just about every other weapon, or basic weapon, except for that. So I had to be at least a little bit creative. And what I ultimately came down to is I went with Bisharp. Now, I didn't want to go King Gambit because King Gambit's whole idea is that he's kind of the leader. He is the king, the head honcho, the head samurai, whatever you want to call it. I, I ultimately didn't think that was a good idea to go with. Because that's not really who he is. He's the second in command, but he's not the main leader. But Bisharp, I think, works a little bit better. It is basically just a walking blade, so it's it's very skilled in that. It's, or, sorry. It works for any weapon, really. Beyond that, it's also dark type, which works in the fact that he does work for a relatively unpleasant person. He himself is not evil, per se. He's just following orders. He's even got a very good warrior's code about him. However... I still think, in terms of blades, there's something to work towards a staff or a lance or a spear or a javelin or a trident. I think this mod's not a bad option. Besides the fact, too, that it's got literally two, technically four, but two blades on its um, stomach and then the main blade up top. Even though they all have multiple tips, 
You can make an argument that's technically three blades, but at the same time, it's got blades on its arms, it's got blades on its leg. It is a walking blade, so that was my uh, that was that was my idea. I also kind of saw his outfit. You see, he's got this kind of I wouldn't say it's a boa. What is this exactly? A scarf of some kind that he wraps around his neck, uh, kind of hides himself in. Uh, I ultimately thought, all right, I could go Greninja, but he's not really a ninja. He's a pirate. But then I'm like, well, what about, and then this mod came to mind. What about this guy? A Selgorn. Now, I've never actually used a Selgorn on a team, but when I look at that, those two in comparison to each other, they do kind of give off a similar vibe. Like, a Selgorn's face is technically hidden inside the um, dome mask helmet of its head. And Skelgor is extremely fast, which Katakura is too. Now, Katakura is not a speedster, but a lot of One Piece characters are extremely fast. So, I actually felt that was not a bad option. The also beauty of when we do Skelgor that will come into play is when we talk about what region this team will probably do the best in, you can have a Skelgor at level 1, because a Skelgor is a trade evolution. It's not a, um, it's not a level up evolution. So, if you get a, I believe it's a Shelmet that, um turns into a Selgor. If you get a Shelmet at level 1, you could have a level 1 in a Selgor, so there's nothing wrong with that. However, now we get, and uh, real quick, the fact that he's pretty much a sharpshooter and an expert marksman immediately thought of Snipeshot, which immediately thought of Inteleon. So that's why Inteleon's on there. But now we get into, like, the big thing here. His Devil Fruit. His Devil Fruit is the Mochi Mochi no Mi. It literally lets him turn his body into Mochi. Now, you might think, how the hell is that a good ability? How the hell is that a good power? You have to understand with One Piece, any ability in theory, even the most weird ones, could be made, could become hacks if trained properly. There's one that only turns your arms into wheels. But, being the creative that I am, I can think of ways that you could actually um, use that effectively in combat against a lot of individuals. It's all about being able to spin your wheels and how fast you can spin them. So, uh, there's that. But no, the Mochi Mochi no Mi is actually, it's first up, it's known what it's known, it's known as a Logia fruit, if I'm not mistaken, it's a Logia. Uh, now, what there are three different types of devil fruit in One Piece. There is Paramecians, which have basically uh, the uh, random assortment abilities. Then there are Zoans, which basically give you the abilities, attributes, and the ability to transform into multi, uh, certain creatures. Some are more powerful than others. Some are very basic. And then there are Logias. Logias are actually apparently the rarest of the Devil Fruits. And essentially, they give you an element, and your body can literally turn into... You can manipulate that element and turn your body into said element. For example, there is the, um, there's the Flare Flare Fruit, which allows you to turn your body literally into fire. There's the magna mag there's the maga maga no mi fruit which turns into magma. There's the ice fruit which turns into ice. The pika pika no mi actually does freaking light. So any element that you can think of in theory is yeah it's the mochi mochi no mi and I believe now I oh no sorry it's a special paramecia type. It's not a logia type. I apologize. It just kind of functions like a logia type. I apologize for that. But uh, which honestly thinking on it now it really does make sense that this should not be a logia fruit. But yeah it turns his body it can. He can turn his body and create mochi. Now, again, why is that so powerful? Well, act because of the way mochi works, it's actually he can create multiple limbs to fight with mochi limbs. He can increase the density, compact his mochi down for insanely powerful punches, which and grow his uh, mochi limbs into insane sizes. He can bind people down with mochi, causing them to kind of be stuck on the ground because it can be sticky he can actually turn inanimate objects into mochi and it can literally heighten his in physical abilities plus he can use hockey to heighten, enhance these things as well and it was even compared to the gomo gomo no mi it was like not it's not the same type of fruit it's not as powerful as the gomo gomo particularly when you get the gear five but it before gear five came about the gomo gomo mi which is the um uh, the gum gum fruit, or basically turning your body into rubber. It was, it, it was actually uh, compared to the gomo gomo me in that sense. So I had to stop and think, okay, mochi, uh, rubbery type substance, goopiness, like, like how do I work that in? So first and foremost, last man who's going to be on the team when we're talking about his, uh, technical journey through the, yeah, regions, um, 
Petra is obviously got to be on the team because it actually is a mochi making Pokemon. <laughs> It, it's whole idea. That's the whole idea of the name of the uh, storyline, Mochi Madness. It actually makes mochi. Now it makes like mind control mochi, mind you. It's a puppeteer, but it's still making mochi. So I have to put that on the team. Beyond that, though, I'm like, okay, Manda have like some rubbery, uh, rubbery bodies. Have kind of a mochi-like body as well. And to a Al Creamy. Now, yes, it is more cream frosting. Uh, base type of body with like fruit and stuff on there, but it's still Al Creamy is still um, it's still I think a good basic representation of a uh, mochi. I would say it's it's not a uh, it's not unreasonable I think ask to say that uh, it can represent mochi in this sense. But then I also went with a mod that should have a rubbery as but a mod that can like kind of take hits go boingy boingy a little bit. That led me to Licky Licky. Licky Licky is what is probably the one on this team that I would be the most okay with uh, swapping out if I were to swap them out. But Licky Licky has a very rubbery body, has a very is able to kind of rebound, and it can learn a couple different like bind. I mean, Lickitung can learn bind things along those lines, which could definitely act like uh, Mochi does when Katakuri is using it. Uh, ultimately. Is it the perfect team in the world? Probably not. Is this the team that I would... Is this, uh, you know, the uh, team that I would use? Yeah, this is probably the team I would pick, but uh, this is just my interpretation of the team. Now, that being said, however, how balanced is this team? And you might be surprised to know this is actually a fairly balanced team. There aren't a lot of weaknesses that kind of cross over, and this kind of helps because half the team are single types. So there isn't a lot of crossover with weaknesses. The only weaknesses that kind of cross over at all are fighting when it comes to um, Bisharp, which has a times four weakness to fighting, and Licky Licky, which has a times two weakness to fighting. Uh, ground, which again, Bisharp, but Petron as well has a weakness to ground. And Fire, which again, is Bisharp and a Selgor in this case. All the other weaknesses here, though, are not shared at all. No other mod on the team has a weakness to poison that Al Creamy does, nor a weakness to steal, really. Um, despite the fact that Al Creamy does, uh, the Petron is a poison type. Poison, while can't it can't do anything against steel poison. Poison itself isn't actually overly hurt by steel. Uh, at least I'm double checking the uh, type matchup right now just to confirm I'm right on that. Because if that's not if that's the case and it can be hurt by steel, and I'm pretty sure I checked prior then Petron would also now have a weakness to steal. Uh, yeah, no. While it can't, well, Poison uh, can't do a damn thing against Steel. Steel's completely immune to it. Um, poison actually isn't weak to Steel. It's just neutral. So yeah, it's, uh, so Steel, perfectly fine. Um, going by their weaknesses, Aselgor's rock and flying weaknesses are not shared by anyone else on this team. Except, well, actually, let me double check that, because I'm trying to remember, is poison weak to rock? No, poison's not weak to rock. Poison is not weak to rock. For some reason, I thought it was. So yeah, that's not shared at all. Uh, Bisharp doesn't really have any other weaknesses apart from, um, uh, what was it? Yeah, fighting fire and ground. That's really all Bisharp is dealing with. Uh, because the fight, uh, and yeah, it really just has all of Steel's weaknesses. Uh, and, but the dark weakness to say a bug is completely mitigated because, and a fairy is mitigated because Steel's there. Steel is arguably the most defensive type you can have. Uh, regardless. Uh, and then Licky Licky's only got the fighting weakness and is immune to Ghost. Uh, Inteleon's got only electric and grass weaknesses, so there's that as well. And then um, Petron still has a weakness to Ghost, uh, still has a weakness to Psychic, but none of that crosses over. So, yeah, ultimately, it's actually a fairly balanced team. But the question still becomes, how well, what what is the likelihood of this team to be, you know, become champion in any region? And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to shorten this because this is where I tend to go on a little too long now. The two regions that you can guarantee that this gym would be able to become, uh, uh, that you could probably guarantee this team could become a 
the champion in would be Kanto and it would be Johto. The reason for this is actually very simple because if we're starting with the idea that Bisharp is the partner, that's what you start out with. You're starting with, uh, with a Pawn Lord, you need a Pawn Yard, and you'll be able to have a Selgor no matter what by the second gym because it's a trade evolution. So Brock's going to get cleaved by a Steel type. Misty's, while she does have a fully evolved Pokemon with Starmie, it's psychic, which means it's not going to be able to do any. It doesn't even have really little psychic attacks, as far as I remember. Even if it did, both are either immune or resist uh, psychic. Surge, you should be able to handle Surge fine with this team. No issue whatsoever, especially because you have Al Creamy. Then you have Erica, who you can have a complete type advantage over with Steel, who will just resist everything. And the Selgor, which is going to have type, I'm mean, going to be the advantageous type there. Then you would go to Koga. Koga, I mean, at that point, then, you have almost your full team. And again, Poison's going to be completely uh, negated by the Steel type. At that point, now you have Petron, which means you can clear the Psychic-type gym. With Sabrina, Intellion should be able to handle most of Blaine's team. And it should be able to handle most of Giovanni's team. I believe it's... Is it Lorelei? I'm thinking of as the... Uh, 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 Ellie Four. I can't remember her name. Because uh, I can remember Bruno, Agatha, Lance, but I can never remember the first one. I want to say it's Lorelei. The, there's not much of a advantage you have over Lorelai because she's the ice is mixed with water. However, Bisharp should still be able to really give you a good win on that. Uh, Bruno, unfortunately, has two Onyxes for him. He's got two Onyxes on the team, which means Inteleon or Bisharp will be able to cleave through that real quick. Yes, Bisharp is weak to the fighting type move, but you have a ghost type move uh, team member. Agatha, again, immunity to poison with Bisharp. You have another poison type with um, Petron. And then Petron can handle the ghost types. Lance is probably the most difficult one, but those, it, because it's Gen 1, those dragon types are not that strong at that point, unless you're going with, like, Leaf Green or something. In which case, then you might struggle anymore. But you shouldn't be having too much of a hard time with Lance. Again, Bisharp's Steel type being resistant to dragon really comes in handy. And while Blue's team is pretty balanced, you should be able to handle it without too much difficulty. Johto's where it got a little bit more tricky, but you should still be able to handle it. Again, you start with Ponyard, it's going to click Ponyard, then the Selgor, you're going to be able to deal with Bugsy and um, uh, Faulkner, no problem. Uh, or sorry, Faulkner, no problem. Even with Dark being weak to Bug, the Steel's going to completely negate that weakness. Uh, that Milk Tank, again, that Steel type and a fully evolved, the Selgor is going to make mincemeat of that Milk Tank. Uh, Morty should not be a problem. Clay could be a little bit trickier because you don't actually have anything overly strong against fighting types here. But you do have, except for Al Creamy. And Al Creamy should be able to get the job done. Honestly, with um, where the real trick came into, where, where it really got kind of tricky here, was, weirdly enough, Jasmine. Because while this team has no real weakness to steal, it is not strong against Steel. Like, again, unless you're using TMs or something like that, most of these Mon don't learn techniques or enough techniques that are really going to be able to help you against Steel-type gyms. So Jasmine is actually going to be kind of tricky to deal with. But you should, with a full team of six and one Mythical on there, be able to handle it. And then you should be able to handle Price no problem against Steel-type, even though Ponyard is not fully evolved, should be able should be fine. Plus, you have a Water-type for uh, Pile Swine. Alcream being a fairy is going to help a lot with uh, Claire. Plus, again, you have a mythical on the team, so it shouldn't be that difficult. And then you're dealing with a, a bug type specialist. A no, it wasn't a bug. So it was a psychic type specialist, which both Bisharp and Petra can handle. Koga you should be able to handle. Bruno again, you should be able to handle, no problem. Even though it seems a little bit better. Um, I was it Lucian, the dark type gym leader you might actually have a little problem with. Now, luckily, you still have a fairy type and a Selgor on the team, so it shouldn't be that hard, but that Houndoom will be able to take down that Selgor if you're not careful. Uh, and then Alcremy can only handle so much because I believe there's also Pokemon that have toxic uh, Toxin on that team. Uh, and then Lance is going to be more tricky here because his team is a lot more balanced out with more attacks, but ultimately, I think you should be able to handle Lance. So I say all that because when I literally went and broke it down... I don't think you can actually become champion with any of uh, the rest of these teams. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, and keep in mind, by the way, I am going by the game. Someone says, well, you know, you're going by more by the games instead of like the anime. It's like, yeah, because the anime, that, that doesn't make any sense to go with the anime. Um, because it's impossible to gauge that with the anime. 
because there's you don't know levels, you don't know anything. We're looking at this from the game perspective. And from the game perspective, again, start with a Ponyard, should be able to handle um, Roxanne, no problem. Um, Brawly, difficult. Ponyard's going to go down fast, but the Selgor should be able to carry you through. Honestly, even... Um, even... Uh, God, why am I... But Watson, even Watson shouldn't be that difficult because there's no like weaknesses here to Electric. Although... Them all being Magnemites and stuff, unless it's Emerald, it should might be problematic because of the steel resistance. Your problem immediately actually comes down to, um, would actually come up to um, Flannery. This is not a very strong team against fire types either until you get your Inteleon. Now, I could have easily swapped Inteleon for Licky. Let me put it this way. If I were to swap these out and have like, uh, Inteleon here before Licky Licky, Yes, you should be able to be then uh, Flannery, no problem. But if you don't have Inteleon before then, that's not going to be an easy win. You might still be able to do it because Excel Excelgar speeds everything there and should be able to take at least one hit from a fire type move, unless it's overheat from Torkoal. But, and Fairy does resist fire, but in Licky Licky's very bulky. But at that point, I'm not even sure you have Licky Licky yet. You, you might, uh, although you can probably egg move it, I think. Regardless. Regardless. Um, yeah, you shouldn't have, um, you might, would still have a Lickito. So, Flannery might be problematic. Uh, Norman's gonna be problematic, because that Slack King, it hits hard. Now, granted, that facade will help you out a lot. I think you can get past it. Flannery's also, not Flannery, um, Whitney? Is that it? Not Whitney? I can't remember. Skyla. I think it's Skyla. Fine, Tidjoon Leader. She's gonna be difficult, because flying resists pretty much everything here. Here, to a certain degree, you have you have no strength against flying, and if Selgor, your one of your aces here, honestly, is going to be weak. But you'll have Petra at that point, and your steel will still resist unless Alteria earthquakes you. Uh, the twins, Lies and Tate, will be difficult, but again, you have an immunity with a dark type move, and you have um, a water type um, Pokemon with Inteleon. Honestly, where the problem really came down is once you get to the final gym and beyond, this is not a team that's cut out to be taken on either, um, uh, oh god, um, the, either Juan or, um, what's the other guy's name? He became champion, and I can't remember his name. But he's, it's not really a good team for water. This team doesn't really handle water very well. It's not, it's not hurt by water, but it doesn't dish out any, you know, water hurting. It doesn't dish out a lot of grass or electric moves at all. So it's... Uh, it, it's a little tricky, to say the least. Plus, there's, like, Mon on a team like Wishcash that have ground-type moves. There's the uh, there's my low tick, which is a powerful Pokemon. Even if you get past that, you still gotta get done with Elite Four. And this is one of uh, the times that the Hoenn Elite Four, this is not actually a very good team for the Hoenn Elite Four. If we just start with the Dark-type Gym Leader, he's going to actually be, have, be... I mean, yeah, Selgor should have no problem, but... And Alcremie should have no problem. But... Don't forget, there's also Shiftry and Cacturn, which are going to make mincemeat of that Inteleon. Uh, then you're going to, you also have the fact that he's got, I believe he's got a Mighty Anon team, which you would have Intimidate. And Petra is weak to Dark type. So that's a touch and go uh, team. Psychic, the, the um, sorry, the Ghost type gym leader, or Elite Four Memory, you have no problem with. Even the Ice type gym leader, or gym leader, Elite Four Memory, you should really have no problem with. The uh, Drake, I think his name is, the Dragon type gym leader problem yes you have al creamy but those he's got two fly gone i believe with earthquake on there plus salamon plus shell guns on alteria they have enough moves to take out that al creamy they also have like i said with earthquake on there that fish sharp's not lasting long and the those are your only real two outs towards that uh, elite four member and yeah petrant can only do so much it's not impossible but it's difficult and I'm going to say right up front, you're not beating um, Steven. You're not beating Steven. As I said when we were talking about Jasmine, this team doesn't handle steel types well. It doesn't get hurt dr drastically by steel types, but it doesn't have moves for them either. Like, if you look at these guys, if you look at these move sets for these guys, I think Ponyard can learn, like, one fighting type move, maybe. Uh, otherwise, like, or, or a Bishop can learn a fighting type move, maybe. Like, Brick Break. But... Yeah, no, I don't think you get past Steven. Likewise, let's just speed this up because we're already at 24 minutes here. 
you can handle the first several gyms in Sinnoh, no problem. In fact, you can handle most of the gyms in Sinnoh without too much difficulty. You cannot deal with this Elite Four, though. Uh, the ground type gym, the ground and bug alone, you don't have answers to. Well, that's not true. You have an answer to the ground with Inteleon, but only to a certain extent. If that Inteleon goes, you're SOL. You can handle fire all right, but two of your strongest Pokemon, Bisharp and Excelgar, they get taken down, you're in trouble. Because he's only got two fire Pokemon on the team, because that's how Sinnoh rolled. So it's really not that good of a fire-based team. Uh, this is really not good for this particular fire-based character. Then you have a Psychic-type gym leader, who's a lot more powerful, Elite Four is a lot more powerful. And honestly, I still don't think you're getting past Cynthia. This team is very balanced, but, this but her team's got answers for pretty much everything on your team. So, Rose Raid, that can handle both Inteleon, it can handle Owl Creamy because it's a poison type. Um, her Spirit Tomb can handle, quite frankly, most of this team. It can handle the Petron, no problem. It's Ghost type, so it can handle any normal moves from Licky Licky. Uh, her uh, Gastron can also handle Inteleon and can handle pretty much uh, uh, Bisharp because it has Earthquake, if, not, if I remember correctly. Her Lucario can handle a large portion of this team. Um, that's not even to mention Togekiss, Milotic, or Garchomp, which would cleave through all of this team. Alcremie would be immune, obviously, to the Dragon-type moves, but it has more than Dragon-type moves. So, yeah, you're not beating Cynthia. I also don't think you're beating Unova either, although I think you can get to the Elite Four with Unova. It'd be a little touch-and-go. Uh, but I do think you can get through the Elite Four with Unova. I honestly don't, not even sure you can get through the Elite Four. Um, it's, it's, you can get to the Elite Four, but I'm not sure you can get through them. And both champions, Alder and Iris, their teams are either stacked with dragons who have enough moves to take down that Alcreamy, which is the only thing that has immunity, or have enough diversity to counteract everything you're throwing at the team. Uh, Volcarona alone can make mincemeat of a large portion of this team. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think you're going to become a champion there. You're going to run into, you might not even be able to make it to the third, I'm not joking, you might not even be able to make it to the third gym with this team in Kalos. Because even if you have an Acelgore that's right around the level to deal with Grant, he has two level 25 Rock Dragon and Rock Ice types. And you're still going to have a Ponyard at that time. I'm going to be honest, I don't think you make it through that gym. Even if you do make it through and you make it to the fighting type gym, Fairy's resistant to fighting. It's not immune. Ponyard's going down quick. Halucha has flying press, which is also flying, which means a Selgor is going down pretty fast too. And Alcremie could take some hits, but I don't think it's making it through. Uh, now, if you could, in theory, get past them, you shouldn't have that much difficulty with the rest of the gym leaders. The Elite Four could be tricky, and I don't think you're being Diantha. So, that's another team you go down to. And Galar, you, you'll, you'd be able to handle the first two gym leaders, no problem. But Kubu, uh, Kabu, I don't think you can beat Kabu. I actually really don't think you can beat him. Well, Creamy is resistant, but only to a certain degree. And even if you are able to beat him, and depending on what version you're going with, you're fighting a ghost-type gym next or a fighting-type gym next. If you're fighting the ghost-type, you should be okay. If you're fighting the fighting-type you're still probably going down. Licky Licky or Lickitung at this... No, it'd actually be Licky, Licky at this point. Would be pretty much SOL'd. Ponyard, again, not managing. And that leaves you with a Selgor, which can resist fighting to a certain degree, but they have other attacks on those demons. And Alcremie, which again, can resist to a certain degree, but yeah. And even if you're able to make it all the way through with Galar, you're not beating Leon. This team's balanced, but Leon's literally got... Leon has both a pseudo on the team and a good pseudo with a dragon ghost type with speed that pretty much blitzes nearly everything on this team. And the one it doesn't blitz, which I believe is a Selgor, it has a fire type movement. I believe it does flamethrower. So, yeah, both P uh, Bisharp and Ponyard are Bisharp and Selgor aren't getting through that. Not to mention it has any one of the starters. Plus, I believe a Mr. Rhyme. There's also um, Aegislash, which there's nothing on this team has a good answer for. And then there's Charizard, which can buy Gigantamax. And then finally there's Paldea, which it's not... The first gym should be fine. Second gym should be golden. Third gym, no problem. Fourth gym. Honestly, you can get through the majority of the gyms, if you're doing them in like level order, without any real difficulty. That's not the problem. The problem's the Elite Four. 
You start with a ground type uh, user, that's fine, not that big a deal. Then you have a steel type user. And as I said, this team doesn't have any answers for steel types. Even if you're able to manage to get through that, there's a flying type user and a dragon user. And then even Gita's team, quite frankly, I don't think you can handle. And that's saying something because Gita is not a very strong champion in the grand scheme of things. So ultimately, yeah, I uh, I would say you are not going to be able to handle this pretty uh, handle this all that well. But look, this is ultimately just my opinion. I think Kanto and Jota are your best bets. Is it impossible? But probably not, but it would be difficult. You'd have to overlevel, and that's kind of defeats the point of asking which gym leader or which region you would you do the best in. So ultimately, that's my team for category or Charlotte category. Let me know who you got if you would do anyone different. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.